What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video. Today we've got the Cal Wrath Guide. We're going all the way through, all the way to that mountain of flames that we'll be firing for. And we'll be sure to cleanse that beacon at the end of it. But we've got more than a few things to cover in this. And there is one portion of it that will be set off to the side. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. As it is a little bit of a side quest. Over here on our right, we will find that map. And as we go a little bit deeper, we will come back and actually hit left. This is one item we need to grab up before we head over to the right side. We'll have a little bit of a mini boss area over here. It's going to be a heavenly vial. Just something to basically heal and uh, give you mana back at the same time. Now, I absolutely hate these little fire minxes. They are... They are broken, in my opinion. I mean, you could be so far away from them, and they can do some of their fire skills, throwing fireballs at the same time. They can be a good bit of frustration, and this little mini-boss fight is uh, ten times worse than the rest of them you'll be facing, as this will be a common enemy throughout Calrath. But first off, over to our right, we'll need to pop that little amoeba, and then just over here on our left, and there's going to be, I believe, two more, actually. This is uh, the ridiculous portion. We'll have another one over here on our right, and then there's going to be one right next to the tree. I mean, absolutely ridiculous how many of these amoebas I ended up having to take down. But coming up over here on our right, I think I, yeah, I possibly didn't even notice just yet, but this is the move that really can just go, I mean, through walls. You, you could be so far away, and she doesn't even have to have line of sight, and she'll just start popping those... Uh, which my colors, those little flame orbs on the ground. Finally, we got that fourth one right over next to the tree. Essentially, what she's going to do is throw fireballs. She's going to have her little anywhere she can pop a fireball up from the ground move. And if you get in close and she starts doing this move where she pulls her hand up next to her face and starts shooting the flames, be aware you're probably not going to break her poison that moment. And it's going to be absolutely devastating when it comes to the damage. So. Keep your distance in moments like that. If you can, just use your throwable. Throw that hammer. It's going to be the best way to counteract that moment instead of just trying to face tank all that fire. You're going to need some pretty decent fire resistance in order to make it through that. But after judging that center, we'll be heading over past that over to our right and getting our first ring for this area, which is going to be the magma ring, which gives us a little bit more of that resistance towards getting that ignite or the buildup essentially that's going to start burning us. Now heading up over to our left, we will have this little staircase over here, pushing deeper into Calrath. We'll have more than a few fire enemies coming up. And just over here on our left, we will have one item to pick up. If it's uh, right next to this door, all the way at the bottom, we'll be opening this door a little bit later on. Over here on the left, we will be grabbing up the Pyrrhic Cultist Flail. Fire Skull Flail. Looks pretty cool. Haven't used it myself, but be going for a fire build. Wouldn't mind just making my own little uh, dual wielding flail flames, especially if they're skulls like that. But over to our right, we'll have a little bit of a, a secret, which is actually just more of a shortcut. I never used it myself. Maybe you'll have the, the moment to actually use it, but it just connects us back to the point where we just had that one vestige point. If you needed to just skip past everything, I suppose, but I didn't have this as we're going to have another vestige point coming up. Not too far ahead. Now, I did end up going back down that alleyway, but we'll actually be taking a right from where we were. Then I'll also be coming back from the Umbral. Now, up ahead on our right is going to be another location we'll have to go into the Umbral for. It's going to be another one of those stomachs to pop. But we also have another one of those uh, snake archers. Absolute nightmare can be extremely devastating but even worse over here before we actually pop this stomach be aware there's going to be three of those little gremlin flying gargoyle things that are going to come down oh and they are absolutely frustrating deadly as ever you'll notice it right after i pick this up we've got another ring and then boom they're just dropping bombs on me i thought i was dead already i was getting furious in this moment thinking i was about to just be finished off by those oh god i hate them this little gargoyle baby gremlin whatever you want to call them i absolutely hate it and every time they're just on the screen with those legs kicking it's it's a nightmare but we'll get a ring out of that that will give us health and soul play charges for any grievous attack but heading on up there we'll also get in a little ammo pouch getting a good bit of that uh i guess material just to help us out as we go 
but then we'll have another flame swordsman very easy to take those guys down like pretty much the deadliest thing about them is when they just flame up his sword and start just spinning it in a circle just spamming the same move over and over it's just like the lower kick from Mortal Kombat it's just a nightmare and a one one combo wonder is what I'd like to call him so the rest of his moves is very easily telegraphed but over here on our right we will get the poisoning knife a little bit of a throwing knife that just had some poison damage I actually found the enhanced version already we've got a couple of them that we, I've already got the better version for because I just took a right turn into some end game content by accident thinking it was just a secret but over here we'll need to go into Umbral we'll be phasing off with the Reaper and a couple of those husks be on the lookout for that sometimes they can be a little bit irritating but as long as you've got the right damage and you just know how to uh, move around there or work around there three different combos shouldn't be too hard now this one was really frustrating you're going to need to run and jump through this one i don't know whether or not i was supposed to drop down into this one or if it's just kind of bugged but it, it took quite a while for me to finally get into it but finally after being able to jump over that we've got another one of those moths over here sadly enough it didn't give us a vestige seed vestige seed or anything better than that but we will have another moth to deal with and uh, ooh, there's some of those gargoyles so be ready for those little gremlins. Frustrating thing. Oh, God, help me. You know, some of these moments when you're in the Umbral, it, it just feels way harder than even some boss fights because it's just so crowded. But over here from that pop stomach, we will be getting a new sword that's going to have a bit more when it comes to wither damage. Should be pretty interesting if you're going for a wither type build. I haven't uh, played around with the wither damage side of or status effect, but... I'd imagine it, it probably could be extremely powerful, especially if you were uh, basically using one weapon to add on the wither and you had another one that was just devastating blow. They could just throw or just melt something super quick, just adding up all that wither damage. But over here on the left, we'll be coming outside of the umbral or back into uh, Axiom. I believe that was the name of it. Land of the Living, if you will. And then we'll have another one of those uh, fire minxes. Goodness, man. I'm telling you, just as soon as you see them, take them out with that throwable. You want to get that thing done as quick as possible because they, <laughs> they can make life a whole lot more aggro. Over here on the left, we'll have a little bit more of that. Uh, oh, that's right. We have a bow over here. It's going to be the bow of Convert. Got the playback on this video at one-fourth the resolution, so a little good bit of this is uh, pretty blurry I'm trying to read it <laughs> but over here we will need to jump back into umbral we'll actually need to go down below after we pull the uh, platform across for us so we'll pull that one across and then one over to our left we'll need to pull over to connect both of the walkways and that is timed right there so that will I don't believe well I think actually yeah both of them might actually be timed but one of them for sure will move back into its position or its original position over here we've got three of these husks or zombies if you will that are just dropping fire bombs all over the place god it is a nightmare over there we'll find a small a crafting material for our weapon and then over to our left we will drop down this ladder but we won't be going down that ladder we'll actually be going down to that location a little bit or much later towards the end of the video but up here we'll find a map, and this is going to be the upper portion of Calrath, I believe. We'll find the vestige point of the Lydia of the Numb Witch. Didn't look too much into the uh, lore on that one, but from this point we'll be heading over to the left portion of this building. Be able to grab up the... I'm telling you, it's an armor set. Can't remember the name of it. One-fourth resolution right here. Do be careful walking down over here as I th I was joking around thinking this was not a minefield. When it turns out, yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of fire mines. I, I really got caught off guard there for a second. So be careful in that moment. You don't want to end up dying right there. But over on our left, we'll have another one of those hounds to deal with. But And a couple of those flame husks. But right behind us, this wall, we'll need to pop open that lamp. Be able to walk through that portion. And we've got a chest inside of here. That will be giving us the the sword of skin and tooth. Looks pretty interesting. It's got 
fairly decent physical damage on it, as well as some fire damage to it. Could be an interesting sword to use. I might play around with it a little bit later on, because it definitely is one that uh, looks pretty interesting, but is the utility just as powerful as the cosmetic? We'll find out later on. Moving into this burning house over here, though, we will find a new hammer, if you will. Mace. It's going to be the scale breaker. This one is going to have a little bit of a background where it's, or essentially it was used back in the day against dragons where they were more prevalent. And that hammer was used in order to break the scales to open up weak points upon the dragon. You know, I wish I had more attribute points or I wish I didn't need attribute points leveling up through that in order to get a little bit more of the background on a lot of these items because there's so many of them where it's like you need more radiant, you need more inferno, agility, you know, so on and so forth when it, it would feel a little bit better if I didn't have to basically re respect my character just to get the lore pieces from some of these weapons. But it is pretty cool in certain moments when you do see it. Now over here, if you're feeling like you... You're not going to make it too far. You know, go up that ladder. That'll head back to the vestige point. You'll be able to drop a ladder over there. I didn't do that in my playthrough. I was able to make it through here pretty easily. And over here, we will get a deer's ring, which is going to increase the inferno attribute. Could be a solid ring for some of those fire uh, spell crafters or spell casters. But before we head on, we'll also get some cinder bolts over here. So some fire crossbow bolts for you. And we'll need to go into umbral. That'll extinguish all fire anytime that we're in umbral we actually won't see a lot of fire and it'll actually open up certain portions but over there we will have that umbral rift getting us a couple more of those shrimpies little scourings now over here now typically that ladder won't be uh, put up right there i actually had to add in some footage for that moment but we'll be dropping back down after we've come up from that and possibly you know it's a good idea to rest at that vestige point if you wanted to. I just had to splice footage in a different way for that as it didn't connect from what I had. I lost a little bit of footage in it. Very frustrating, but thankfully we didn't lose any footage of getting some of the good loot or any loot in general. But heading on over, we'll have a burning tree and everything seems to be on fire. Now we will have to go into uh, Umbral for this section right here, but not just yet. You know, as the footage gets a little bit grainy, this is one of those moments where I started having some trouble with the footage, but thankfully nothing got too bad. You don't want to go into Umbral just yet. You you want to take down the uh, the Fire Minotaur guy before you go into it, as it, it does get a bit hectic over here. But thankfully, if you've got the right points into your build, you know what your build is. You've been building it up quite well should be able to make it through this fairly easily as uh, fat boy over here is just just a big dummy and there's more than a few enemy types in this game than are just childlike now, that is going to be a chisel that we'll use in order to upgrade our lamp so if you want to you know next vestige point you could go back to uh, old mole over there at the sky rest bridge and upgrade that lamp but over here we'll have to, uh, something's axe i can't remember her name specifically Appreciate it again, Carnage. Always loving that uh, resub. It's always greatly appreciated. Now, moving forward, we'll come back out of Umbral. Still, I believe this is actually... Yeah, we've, we've fixed the issue with the footage. Thankfully, now everything's smoothed out. It should look a whole lot smoother. And over here on the right, we'll be grabbing up a bit more of that crafting material for upgrading our weapons. Ah, forget that axe back there, I can't remember if it was a bleed axe or I don't know why I'm thinking about it. Over here, essentially, I wasn't sure what was going on. I was kind of just looking everywhere, but there's going to be a ladder over here. We'll drop down to our left. We'll have a hound. See, this is basically right past that tree. I missed opportunity for loot over here is what I was thinking. I even went back there with a lamp later on. Nothing opens up. But over here, we will have another one of those fire minxes. Oh, man, I'm telling you, look at it. She doesn't even have line of sight on this, but she's just popping them all up. My God, that, that flame hand. Thankfully, they're pretty squishy against me. But goodness, they can be absolutely devastating. Now, over in this tent over here, we will, we will be finding another shield. It's going to be the something display. Not too bad. Not the worst shield out there could be uh, 
quite nice for you. And we will have another secret entrance over here using the lamp. Grab that up and we'll get the serrated staff. It's got some fire damage to it. Almost seems more like a halibut with a saw on the other end of it. Bit interesting in my opinion. Now over here we will need to go into Umbral as I spoke before about the fact that certain locations the fire will dissipate once we're in the Umbral. This is going to be one of those locations. Come over here, get a bit of that uh, Wither Ward, giving us good uh, resistance against that ward. But heading up this building, it's going to be more than a few husks that we'll need to deal with. And there will be an item over on our left, which is going to be the Fallen Lord's Sword. It's got some fire damage on it. Grand Sword, pretty hefty weight on there, but it's got some decent fire damage to it. Over the top, we'll have another one of those moths, and we'll be popping the stomach on this one. I believe there's a ring inside of this one, but I could be wrong. If I was wrong, it's going to be that healing upgrade item. Be able to take some of those back and get some more of those flasks or whatever that healing thing is. It just looks like a cross to me, but I, think, I feel like we drink blood out of it. Kind of reminds me of that one, uh, what was the creep show? Tales from the Crypt. Have you ever seen that one episode where that guy comes in and he uses blood from a vial that's apparently from Jesus and it's like supposed to sanctify the entrances so they can't come in. That's what it kind of reminds me of. But we'll have that chest back there. What was that chest? I, you know, I, I missed that completely. Hold on. That's right. We'll get the spell Lava Burst from that one over there. Which I believe is going to be the one that uh, that Fire Minx keeps throwing at us. But over here we'll find a little bit of a hatchet is the ranger's axe looks like one that would be a throwable but it's actually going to be a single-handed weapon in my opinion could be interesting to utilize that in a dual wielding sense but we'll need to be an umbral for this section in order to get up to the next area and we'll come out of umbral just up that uh staircase a whole lot of fire up here but over here on our left there will be a ring that we'll be able to grab up i believe it was a ring i can't remember 100 percent, but it's along this walkway Yes, it was a ring, and this ring will actually give us the capability of having a vampiric, or a vampiric ability, I should say. Anytime that we kill, we'll be able to heal a little bit with it, much like the uh, bloodlust weapon. I have another one of those fire minxes up here. Ooh, just keep hammer it in. I love that hammer. It's nothing better than that throwable. Makes life a whole lot easier in more than a few instances. Now you'll notice we have a boss fight coming up. We've got a giant to deal with, so... Over here, we've got a flower bed. Going to pop down that vestige seed. I didn't actually need to use this one. I was able to get this one done in one run, thankfully. But I can see how there's some instances where people might have a little bit of trouble with this one. But if you don't want to hit that uh, vestige seed or you don't have many, you can go back down and we're going to unlock a shortcut from the vestige point that we previously had. We'll be going back down to that second floor and we'll be able to head down a ladder over here over on our right technically there's going to be a moth that we'll need to deal with we'll get a vested seed out of that so you may want to come back and just kill that if you want to just get a regain but over here on our left you'll notice we're back at the ale house we'll drop that ladder down and we can just literally bolt from that portion all the way up to here and be able to just make it into the boss room if you don't want to cost that uh, or spend that vested seed right there it's up to you, though. We already made it back, or I made it back. And one thing to keep in mind as well is these vestige seeds do have a cap limit on how many you can hold. So sometimes you do kind of wonder to start spending them, as it's just going to be more useful for you, and it's just going to make your life a whole lot easier. No doubt about that. Now, we've got the giant boss fight over here. We've got a bit of a child here who's definitely playing some with, uh, you know, some dead bodies. Playing like it was house or something. A little interesting. And then... Uh, he definitely spits something up. And you'll notice each time he spits that hand up, you'll see that AoE move that we just saw. In the beginning, this fight is more difficult than it is once it progresses to the next stage. It's not going to be a second phase. It seems like it is, but the, the hardest thing about this first portion is just the fact that it, it's really... It's not the most difficult thing to see the telegraph on what his moves are going to be. But when you're locked onto one of his legs and you're trying to get in close like that, not seeing the majority of this creature is going to be problematic in a way. But this is going to be the moment where we've got to head up to the second story. We're going to find one of these staircases and start basically playing on one of these platforms. 
now all there's going to be three of these and they're all going to be connected through an outside uh I, I guess bridges walkways so don't even worry but this is when the fight actually gets a whole lot easier effectively what's going to happen here is uh, best bet is honestly going to be to lock onto his chest that way you can see his full body and see a lot of what different types of movies going to be playing but the most part he's going to be slamming down like this for whatever reason the thin hand compared to the thick hand is going to take less damage and if you can get closer to the edge where his chest is going to come down after he started doing some of these swings you may actually get a bit more damage that way but it felt like the the right hand was taking more damage than this thin hand over here every time that i was taking a swing but again like i said locking onto the chest that way you can see his head you can see this moment when he pops out his arm he's going to do that either this magma thing or he's going to do the aoe fire ring that comes out and whenever he does that, we can no longer use that platform right now. It's completely covered in magma, so we're going to move over to the next one right now. Now, he'll also shoot a giant fireball, but luckily enough, this one does leave some fire damage on the ground or magma, but it's not going to take up this whole portion over here. Effectively, we just need to stand in the middle and be ready to swing anytime that hand lands. He will start doing some swiping motions. Yeah, you'll notice right here, he holds that hand up and then he just clean sweeps across. Pretty easy to dodge it. Good telegraph with this boss. I like the uh, visual effects of this boss. And it, it does have... Now, I mean, it's not, it's not the most difficult. It's not the most entertaining one, I will say. But it, it, it fits the bill, in my opinion. I wouldn't call it a bad boss fight. It looks cool. It just may take a bit longer than uh, I'd like it to, considering I just don't feel like I'm doing enough damage to these hands, or at least one of these hands is not taking enough. You could start using throwables, and in this moment, you do need to go over into the middle walkways. You need to find a wall. I don't know if that's a 100% fact, but it seems like that. I never tried standing out in the open whenever he did that move. Anytime you see that, you want to try and make your way over to one of these midsection walkways with a wall. As you'll notice the flames were coming around the edges of it and it just kind of like looks like one of those 360 radius you know if nothing's blocking its path it's going to deal some massive damage if not possibly being a one shatter but you'll notice it was one of those moments i'm locked onto the hand i couldn't really see that hand coming up in the air and next thing you know i took a good bit of damage right there i've got no health vials right now i'm just kind of working on what i've got right now start eating some rocks that way I can get a little health back. But I I kind of played around with this. I only got one shot at this and I ended up winning it. So that's you know, that's something right there. But I was playing around with what lock on should be the right one. Uh, that's right, he does end up doing a different move later on where he comes down to the ground. Anytime you see that, he's gonna start spitting that hand out. Got another fireball coming out. But it's going to be a whole lot easier if you end up, uh, yeah, like I would have seen that coming had I been locked on to uh, the chest. And in those moments, you'll notice I was dealing some massive damage with that hand that was just laying there. You do want to kind of run over, make sure that you're hitting that hand. That one seems to be critical hits, if you will. And he's going to do it again. Now this time he's popping out those magma orbs again. So we're going to have to transition to the next base, the next platform. It does look sick when you're in the Umbral and you got those other giants in the background. I just noticed that myself. I never even saw that while I was doing this fight. I was so focused on the boss, but those hands and those giants everywhere in the background it, and the giant sword back there, that does look really nice. Now, I know some people may think that the Umbral is a bit gimmicky, but there, there's some visual effects from it that just looks really nice. And that hand in the background. But coming down to it, yeah, this is, uh, you know, we've, pretty much shown every different type of attack this guy's going to throw out there. He might do the uh, one with the hand again. You notice it was a lot easier to see that one coming, but I'm still an idiot and missed it. Ate some more rocks to try and heal myself a little bit more. Surprised I haven't. Oh yeah, he's going to do that massive AOE when you'll notice those flames again. They just kind of come around the wall. That's why I assume it's one of those moments. I should have been using throwables in this moment. And he does end up having uh, the lava dissipate 
by this time. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly happened. It was almost like he was just full on stunned and I was able to just walk down there and finish him off. But do uh, remember to hit that uh, umbral rift right after to get that remembrance. You want to make sure that you grab those up after every boss fight. Haven't missed one yet, but who knows? You, you never know. Some people might forget about it or they might have beaten that boss without going into umbral, didn't even notice it, forgot about the blue butterflies and then just... Uh, you know, went on about their life. But right after that, we'll coming up on the vestige of Dolan. Dolan. And we're going to be pushing into the upper portion. Calrath, or I think we're already there technically. No, 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 we're not there. We're not there yet. However, Calrath is a little bit later on. We're about to technically go and do some mines in order to get to that portion of it, though. More than a few fire enemies over here, and in this next section, there was a there was a secret. Uh, we've got one right here and over on our right. Now, over to our left, there is a guy behind the wall, so be ready for that. But we'll get the effigy pendant over here, which will increase our damage but reduce our health at the same time. I put this on, and it put me at really low health. I don't know how much damage output it actually has, but I did not want to take the chance on uh, trying to play around with that because my health literally went below half. In my opinion. And I'm just not trying to be a, a super glass cannon. You know, some some moments I feel like I'm already a glass cannon. But to put it at that point, it, it's like I'm going to be constantly an umbral. But going forward, we'll need to go into umbral here in a moment. Also get the old Mornstead uh, large sword over here. And over to our right, you'll notice a platform, but... We'll need to take out the enemies on our left before we jump into the Umbral. Got another one of those Flame Sword guys, and we've got more than a few of these guys protected with uh, those amoebas in the Umbral. Thankfully, able to use that hammer to just uh, throw them on down. Now, from this point, we'll be heading over and we'll be jumping into the Umbral. Now, I'm a complete idiot. I, I didn't even showcase how... I got this uh, platform to go across, but you'll need to walk up on this. I didn't even see it the first time. I couldn't even believe it, but this is how you jump over to the left as well. This item really isn't even worth it, in my opinion. It's just a vigor skull. It's not that great. And then we'll head back up top, you know, run past everything. We got a, a little Reaper character over here. We will have to kill the rest of it. You don't have to end up fighting or... It probably will. I just, uh, I just ran past it. But coming over here, you'll need to jump from that top portion over to that in order to grab this up, and then we'll actually get a hammer that has wither damage. Looks pretty cool as well. Stomach over here. It's got radiance and inferno that increases its damage. But then we'll be jumping back across, and then we'll have another stomach to pop over here, and we'll need to jump across, and we'll be getting another. Uh, this is going to be another one of those amulets. This one is going to give us the capability of dropping a mine anytime that we kill an enemy. It's not going to be every time, but it gives you that possibility of dropping a mine. I don't know how powerful that could possibly be. I haven't really looked into what type of build you could even really work with that one. I know there's something that gives throwables more damage, but I don't know whether or not that would be something to enhance the power of that or... If that amulet in general would actually be extremely worthwhile considering most of the time if you're killing enemies there's no way that you're more than likely going to be pulling enemies back into those mines later it's, it's a bit confusing in my opinion but down here we'll have another one of those fire minxes along with her own fire ghoul army and do watch out, but you can pull that back. We'll have another person over here that we'll need to drop down and get this ring that is going to be giving us an increase to our overall mana. And just over to the right from that, there will be some of those uh, angler loots, but we'll need to go over to staircase over here on the right as well. Somebody's going to try and Donkey Kong us, but we'll be able to dodge that pretty quickly. And up inside of here, we'll be getting the banner javelin of protection this is one of those that you can strike into the ground giving us a you know you and your allies a bit more protection more physical defense i believe it was and then we'll need to be in the umbral yet again for this as there's going to be another stomach to pop over here on our left i had to mix and match this footage because i'm telling you every one of these secrets i i 
doubled back this area probably five different times. It's unreal. Like that, that one portion up top where I didn't notice you could literally walk up the path to jump across. I mean, unbelievable. Well, we'll have another one of those magma minotaurs over here. So do be uh, mindful of that. And the longer you stay down here, the more time, uh, or not the more time, he will start walking down here if you spend too much time down here. Like he does eventually end up in that section over there. So if you're kind of just running around doing your own thing, he will show up at some point. Over here, we'll have another one of those old Mornstead swords. I think we just found one before. It's basically like a duplicate, so you could have two. Nice little dual wielding moment. A bit more of that crafting material for our weapons over there on the left as well. And then we'll be dropping into this house over here. Over on our left, we're going to be grabbing up the lump hammer, which I already have the enhanced version of this, but it's still extremely powerful. I love that hammer. That throwable is just ooh, chef's guess moment. But then we've got a deer's authority, which is going to be an inferno shout that will. It's almost like we're shouting and just creating damage around us, uh, almost like turning us into a banshee. I'd assume that's what it looks like from the picture. I haven't used it myself. But down here in the bottom portion of this house, we're going to have another one of those moments where that one hit wonder, man, as soon as he flames up that sword and just starts doing that circle move, I just can't stand it. But we'll have an umbral lamp down here, and inside of the fireplace is the most important item. We'll get another one of those um, tomes, chipped rune tablet. These tablets we're going to need to bring back to the blacksmith and that's going to give us the capability of gaining the sockets and our weapons you have to have that i mean it's going to be just uh, the best in slot for you because it's just going to make your weapons even more powerful now the red reaper got me on that moment we had spent way too long on umbral but if you wanted to in that moment if you died just as well you know you could just hit the uh what is it? Vestige point. Go back to the sky bridge and give her those tablets and start socketing your weapons soon enough by the end of this uh, area, especially if you go into the side mission portion of it, you'll be getting a whole lot of those, um, I guess, runes that you can socket into your weapons or shield. But in that room over to our left, we'll be able to ugh, be able to come out of Umbral. And we'll actually get the Overseer's armor set. I believe that's the name of it. And from that point, we'll just need to head right on back down. Now, I moved through the, what was that, I guess, through the house and through the other exit. They both end up at this same location, so don't even worry if you wanted to go back down uh, from the point of that chest. It's going to be the same spot that you'll actually end up on and no difference in loot. But down here, we'll need to go into Umbral and we would be able to jump across and then open up this stomach over here for the umbral tomb or tome now raiden back at the skyrest bridge you should know who i'm talking about the guy with that big hat he's going to actually want that as a side quest item later on so hang on to that one it's just going to be a part of that and then he'll be able to I, i'm not sure what he gives you i haven't gotten the gift from him from him reading that but something will eventually come from it from you actually giving it to him so that's going to be a Pretty specific item that'll help you out. And then we'll have the Overseer's Halibird down here. Not much special to it, in my opinion. But we'll also have another stomach to pop down here, which is actually just going to give us some more of those shrimpies, or umbral scourings. And then we'll be able to open up this down here for the... Uh, I can't remember what these mines are called. There's something... I think I was having trouble with the name of it the whole time. But there's a vestige point over here, the hooded Tuli. And then there will be a door over here that we will be opening up later in the video. We'll be going into that basically at the very end. Sunless skein. Skein. Or I, I can't remember. If, I don't <laughs> Can't remember. No, I just don't know whether or not that's how you say that word. But going forward inside of the sunless, that's what we'll call it. We'll have a few enemies over here that will be protected by an amiibo. We'll need to pop that and then just start finishing them off pretty quickly. You'll notice we have more than a few pieces of loot. It's going to be a little bit of a maze down here, but we'll, or I've made it as linear as possible and we're going to make our way, make our way through pretty efficiently. And going down this area, we'll have another enemy that will pop out just off to our left from these barrels and we'll have a little bit of that crafting material for our weapons over there. 
Have some more of those long range uh, fire throwers down through here. So be on the lookout for that. And over to our left, we'll have a little bit of that poison cure. More than a few donkey barrels coming through. Donkey Kong barrels, I should say. And then we'll fall through the floor over here. We'll have a good bit of zombies that'll come up from the water. But over here to our left, we'll find a little bit of that cosmetic. Another uh, color scheme we can put on our armor. More than a few zombies down through here. And I would highly suggest going into Umbral before coming over to this location. There is another enemy that's going to be throwing those fireballs. So move it on back. Make it into Umbral. Pull out the lamp and then pop all those explosive things on the walls. Sadly enough, even the second time that I came through here, I did die and had to re-roll through here. I wasn't able to kill that guy with those uh, explosives on the wall. But in this next room, we will have Umbral Rift that will need to pop. And be sure to heal before making this drop. Because I did not heal and whew, instantly died. I was even in Umbral. Really frustrating. Didn't even think about it. Came back. Were able to drop on down in there. Got myself out of Umbral because I thought I might actually die down here. But it doesn't do the full health bar, but it almost does. And then we've got the uh, Devoted Chopper, which is going to be a cleaver that has fire damage. Could be good for dual wielding, maybe if you're doing a fire dual wield build. Wanted something to add, uh, I guess, a bit more swing to it. Uh, I'm not even sure which one would be better. But going up from that point, we'll find another one of those rings, and this one's going to further increase our endurance attribute. So if you're looking for something that gives you a bit more when it comes to carry weight, could be uh, beneficial for you. And over here next to that ladder, we will want to pull that lever before heading over from that location. We need to drop down over here and grab up the enhanced fire grenade. Still not the biggest fan of the fire grenade, but the enhanced one might give us a little bit of a bump up when it comes to damage. As you'll notice, it's got 120 forts going towards fire on there. But it could be one of those that might be more powerful later on if you combine it with different rings and give yourself more throwable damage. Still thinking about making a throwable build, as there's so many that are so good in this game, but we'll see in the coming future. But going forward, we need to head up this ladder as this will actually get us to the point past the point where we fell into the floor. We'll get some basic bolts over here. Can help us. I essentially, I probably look at these and think to myself, it's more of if you wanted to cross over to be a crossbow person, you know, maybe you started off as a melee. This gives you the opportunity to basically use crossbows in your own fashion if you wanted to. Or maybe it just gives you a bit more damage with the arrows from it. Or bolts, I should say. But over here on the left, we'll have another item to pick up. I don't believe I actually looked into this one. This one's going to be. It's going to be a crossbow itself. I didn't pull it up. That's right. I, for I completely forgot about this. Should have added it. Blah, should have added it in. But most of the time, you know, you, you automatically can uh, look at it once you get to it, whether or not it's going to be a really solid crossbow for you. Because there's not many other ones that you probably come across. But finding it for free, not going to be a worry for you. But we'll have another shield over here that's going to have some decent physical damage reduction. But... A little bit later on, we'll actually find another shield that's even better, but it's just going to have a huge weight factor to it. We'll be opening up that uh, door just a little bit later, but as we come down to this area, we will need to go behind the barrels and over to our left, and then pop into Umbral as we'll need to pop into this room back here. And we will have another Umbral Rift back here, as well as a ring, I believe can't remember if it was another ring. Nope, it's just going to be a little bit more of that crafting material for our weapons. Now moving down through here, it's going to be a little bit claustrophobic. More than a few explosive uh, oils on the walls. But we will also have some more. Oh, that's going to be the shield of whispers right there. 40 weight on it, but that, that thing's got some serious uh, damage reduction on it when it comes to its capabilities. Wouldn't be surprised if that's uh, one of the stronger shields in the game. You just need a whole lot of endurance in order to actually wield it. Or possibly a little bit later on when we start talking about giving the tomes to uh, the blacksmith, there is a um, rune that you can socket into a weapon or shield. It, it may not work the same for the shield, but I can't remember. It may be able to take away all of the weight from that, so... That may be a way to actually utilize that and not have to have massive amounts of endurance. 
going forward down through this tunnel over to our left we'll be able to grab up the miner's pendant this is going to be something great for people that are spell casters you can utilize this to gain more spell slots on your catalyst up to five slots so you can have five different spells on there going to be pretty powerful for some of those casters out there you definitely want to grab that one up moving forward won't be able to drop down on either end of this ledge, but in this next room, we will have to go into Umbral here in a moment. We'll have some uh, throwable guys, and over here to our left, before anything, we need to open up this door and grab a little bit of that crafting material for our weapons. That way we do, we have a shorter uh, run, just in case we do end up dying over here, as once we go into Umbral, we'll have uh, one of those fat boys down there, you know, the Splits open its head and more than a few of those husks to deal with. So be on your guard as soon as you get down into this uh, pit over here. Now going into the umbral, taking a dive into here, over here on our left. We can break that open, but we'll be able to get to it without needing to hit that ladder just behind it. Going down below, you'll notice there's the fat boy. It's already letting out his charges. We've got more than a few husks. It gets pretty irritating down here, and we do have some of those... Uh, Enemy types. Oh. No, it's it's just Fat Boy. He's he's the one causing all the wither damage from every time he slams down. And we'll get a little bit more of that uh crafting material over here as well as another vigor skull after we've defeated the fat boy. Or Mr. Potato Head, if you will. Another vigor skull over here. Now the bodies that are hanging we, we don't need to uh, throw anything at them. I had one of those oopsie moments where up above there's actually something we need to soul flay. Somehow, like, camera locked onto that. But we'll also get another one of those runes from this uh, pop stomach over here. you notice I tried to knock it down with a throwable. Later on, we'll, we'll hit a, uh, a lever that's actually going to reduce the water in here. So that way, that's when we'll be able to pick up some of these items. But just over here, we'll come out of Umbral and we'll actually be able to hit our next vestige point of Katrin. Also have that guy that uh, looks like he's straight out of Army of Darkness over to our right that's going to be asking about a pendant that's down there. I didn't actually find it. But from this point, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go to the Sky Bridge now. You'll come down to a point if you've got all three of the tablets where it'll ask to give the last tablet to either the blacksmith or the person next door. I gave it to the blacksmith and giving that to the blacksmith actually gave me a rune later on that gave me the capability of basically turning my weapon into the lightest feather ever. You know, it just had no weight to it. And from that point, I was able to put on some pretty tanky armor after I was able to reduce the complete weight of my... Uh, weapon so that's up to your choice i don't know what the other end of it gives you but that's what i chose but we're going to need to head back to the hoist um vestige point from this point we'll talk to that guy that's from uh, army of darkness he'll give us a gesture we won't be able to open that door up just yet we'll we, we'll be getting to that a little bit later on this is going to be the lever that reduces the water and then we'll be able to climb down then grab up a new ring, the ring of, uh, yeah, that's pretty, is it bones? Can't even see, honestly, but that's going to give us an increase to our maximum equip load. Just giving us a bit more of that capability of putting on some heavier weapons or heavier armor. Up to you, honestly, it's not something I'd really go for, but could be useful for speed runs, maybe. But heading back, we'll need to go to the section where that guy up top is going to be uh, you know, invincible because of that amoeba we'll need to kill him we'll actually be able to walk across from that bottom section right there you notice that after we drop the lever this came down we'll be able to kick down this walkway that way if we do die we'll be able to just quickly make a shortcut out of that and walk across this way now they pretty much failed with that donkey Kong moment right there but then we've got another one of those so who man those flame marchers they are nightmarish whenever they see that mortar fire. But inside here, we'll actually get a, what, what was the name of this? Sovereign armor set, which is actually pretty solid. It's going to be hefty when it comes to the weight, but when it comes to defenses, after I was able to reduce the weight of my weapon, that was actually the uh, armor set I went with, minus the helmet. It didn't have the same as the cone head, but 
the torso and the legs were stacked out on physical defense and pretty decent resistances on it. So I went ahead and just threw that on there and it, it's somewhat noticeable. I'm not going to say it's going to make you uh, invincible, but it does help. Now, before moving forward, we do need to drop that ladder down as there's going to be a, a platformer moment over here that is going to be, uh, it, it's extremely frustrating. I, I spent quite a few jumps trying to get this down. You notice we just saw it with the lamp, how those bars disappeared. So we'll go into Umbral and over here, we're going to need to make a, a bit of a weird jump. You need to jump well before the edge. You need to kind of jump beforehand. Now that, that wasn't a jump right there. That was me trying to jump, but didn't quite make it. But what you want to do is jump off to the right, but you want to jump before you even get close to the edge. That way you kind of have this nice arc as you do want to drop down here. So it's going to give us that health grub, health upgrade item, which is going to be, you know, it's always useful no matter what. Just having more of those health files is always going to be better. But heading back up to the top, we'll also get a cursed effigy. This is going to be a throwable that does fire damage and physical damage i believe pretty interesting one right there i believe it could be considered as a grenade as well but i'm not 100 percent certain on that we'll also get another ring over here on the left and this is going to give us an increase to our damage from grenades and uh what was the other one i'm forgetting it but it's effectively going to be that ring that i was talking about that further increases our damage and makes it cost less for us to throw those as well I mean, there's plenty of items that are going to basically be making uh, the capability for some of these throwable builds to be pretty strong. But over here, you definitely want to pick up this item. This is going to give us the sunless key. This is how we're going to open up those doors way back when at the mine's beginning. And it's going to give us a little bit of added uh, items to grab up. Not too many, but it's going to be enough to uh, be worth your while. Now, moving from this portion over to our right you're going to have another one of those oh those snakes every time i see them that one and the uh, fire minks absolutely devastating now we're not going to cover the uh i guess southern portion of this just yet we can go and dive deeper into this i'm going to make a completely different guide on that area as it's actually a part of a side quest and it's a part of a completely different ending for the game as well. It's a way that you can get a different ending. So I'm going to do a completely different guide video on that section down below there. I'll have that coming out later. Clutch, greatly appreciate that raid again. But we'll have a boss fight over here before we get onto the lift. This, uh, this guy will also be another one that will be a common enemy we'll be facing on. Or facing going forward. A little bit of a mini boss moment. He's pretty quick. You'll notice a lot of his uh, moves, as soon as you see the telegraph, you almost need to be immediately ready. It's not the hardest uh, enemy to face off with, but there are certain moments where it's almost like he can just start chaining combos. You'll notice like a moment like this, sometimes he can just do that like six different times, and it's extremely frustrating. And then there's other moments where he'll just glide across one attack. You'll be able to get a couple of strikes in, then boom. And then he'll do it one time right there. And then next thing you know, he may just start swinging wildly. It's pretty irritating, but that's pretty much the, the most of his moveset. After that, it becomes the flame thing. Uh, it just adds a little bit more damage to it. Like that moment. That, there. Yeah, he starts spamming it. Look at that. It's ridiculous. And how are you even supposed to get ready for that? Uh, that's like the... The flame guy with the sword that just keeps spinning it in a circle every time he's striking towards you. Frustrates me. Almost died right here. But thankfully only went down one time and we judged that center. Also be getting a face shield out of this. But at the same time we do want to be an umbral for this last portion as there's another stomach we need to pop off to the left of this lift before we get on top of it. And we'll be getting the veil piercer. It's going to be a wither spear. Or wither halberd, possibly. Long range uh, weapon with a bit more of that wither damage to it. But heading on up, we at the upper portion of Calrath. We're basically down the road from the beacon that we need to cleanse up here, and we'll also be able to grab up 
the next vestige point and we'll be meeting up with the Arthur fellow. Uh, not Arthur. The guy from Army of Darkness. Uh, he'll be on the other side. He says that he's found the pendant, so I'm not sure if I missed out on a side quest in that moment. Let me know down in the comments below if you know anything about that one. I looked and scoured everything underneath there and I could not find what he was talking about. Or I possibly should have if I did. I don't I don't think there was any spot I could have missed, but I could be wrong. Could have been on one of the moths, even. Who knows? Going through here, you'll notice we have another one of those moments where we've got that fire minx up top. She's doing her damage from afar. Those ranged attacks are just... I mean, they're devastating with those fireballs coming up from the ground. She's trying to do that flame hand again. I mean, I'm already half health. She barely even touched me. We'll also be able to jump across from this portion right here. And back here at the right, I believe it's some yeah fire ward over here. Giving us a little bit more of that fire resistance. Over here on the left, we've got another ring. This one's actually just going to regenerate health over time when we wear it. Queen's second or something, I believe the name was. And we'll have another husk army to deal with, as well as that reaper. But we will need to be in umbral going forward. We need to go back up top as there's... Leave. I said only one of them. We'll need to soul flay this one over on our left real quick. To open up the path going forward. Yes, it was just one of them. And we'll be able to walk through that grate. Come back out from the umbral into Axiom. And just ahead of us, we'll also get a cosmetic over there on the right. There's a huge amount of hounds over here and one of those mag minotaurs. So be at the ready. You know, they're going to kind of swarm you. Thankfully, I was able to get one of those uh, cleave swings going. And then that lump hammer is just uh, devastating that minotaur, making my life so much easier. Throwables, they're a great idea in this game. We'll actually be opening up that door fairly soon. I went around the circle of this, uh, what, which almost looks like Pompeii. Was it Pompeii that everybody turned to ash? I can't remember the island. But one of those, you know, just looks like that type of zone. But just going up the stairs from there, you know, we'll be able to grab another one of those shrimpies, little umbral scourings from that umbral rift. We've got more than a few enemy types over here, some that are going to be the uh, suicidal explodey ones so be on the lookout for those exploding ones now if you wanted to go and just cleanse the beacon right away it's right over there but we're gonna head over to the right real quick we've got an umbral rift right over here as well for more of that scouring and from this point we'll be able to drop down from this uh little ledge over here use the soul flay to be able to jump across and we've got another armor set over here that we'll be able to grab up can't remember the name of it, but I remember it not being as great as the Sovereign Armor. As you'll notice, I'm wearing it right now. And that'll be the door that we just saw, and we'll be able to open that up, making a little shortcut for ourselves. And then, another Umbral Rift. We're going to have more than a few Umbral Rifts going forward that kind of just kind of ties in a little bit of the story. Gives us a little bit deeper lore when it comes to um, the guy that helped us out with the Light Reaper at the very beginning of the game. The Mayfair guy. I can't remember his name specifically. We will need to go into Umbral as there's another stomach we'll need to pop over here. We've got another Reaper to deal with as well as more than a few enemy types. And there's going to be one of those uh, snake archers at the other end as well, so be prepared for that. Gets to be a pretty dangerous fight out here, especially while you're in Umbral. Sometimes it may be a good idea to just move in and uh, clear out as efficiently as you can. We'll have a cursed dart right there. That's going to give us uh, basically like another throwing uh, poison damage knife almost item. Just may be one that costs less than the throwing knife itself. So it may be one that just costs uh, one throwable slot instead of two. But going forward, we've got another one of those umbral rifts and we'll wayfarer right there. I'm trying to talk about he's not a monster. Apparently, I guess he went through this whole city just melting everybody. But he is the reason, apparently, that this city is burning down to the ground because he left something with uh, the mortals here. And, well, we all know mortals, as soon as they grab something that's powerful, it ends up like Mordor all over again. Oh, goodness. But we'll need to head back into Umbral just behind that fire minx and then push on to this secret zone over here. And then... Uh, we're actually going to have two steps that we'll need to soul flay over here. I highly suggest soul flaying both of them before heading up top. I actually went up top without hitting both of them. 
but we'll have that Umbral Rift on our right. We'll also have a Melted Dark Crusader Sword over here that does apply Wither damage every strike, but we need to hit both of those items right there, get some Wither Salts over on our left side. It's going to be more than a few of those little gremlin flying things. Absolutely frustrating. But then from this point, we'll be able to grab up our next spell, which is going to be the Grayyard Fog. Basically going to be like a Wither Mist type item. Or was it? Might have been something else I couldn't... Or I can't remember specifically right now. But heading back down, we'll come out of the Umbral, and over on our left, we'll have a barrel that's actually hiding some crafting material. Some large shards right there. Then on our right, a couple of those uh, hounds to deal with. Just past here, you'll notice, just like that mini boss from before, a whole lot easier to take down this time, though. But up top, we'll have another ring that actually is going to be the Moth Ring. Basically gives us an increase of vigor from killing enemies. So if you're looking to farm a bit more vigor from some of these enemies, or maybe you need to catch up a couple of levels, maybe you lost some vigor back in the day, you know, running through certain zones could be problematic. Now this Umbral Eye from the stomach over on our left is actually pretty interesting increases light attack damage but only causes wither damage from those light attacks so then you could swing with a heavy after that and just kind of finish somebody off pretty interesting right there then we'll have another umbral rift over here as well as the banner javelin of assault one of those that's going to help us with uh, basically healing and uh, protection but that's where we'll get a little bit of that story right there as to him leaving things with the mortals and uh, Things didn't go too well. We've got another amulet down here that's actually going to reduce the cost of shout and buff sorceries. So if you're somebody that's playing with somebody else and you're basically playing like the healer or the buffer, that, you know, could be a solid play right there for you wearing that amulet. Now just over here, if you've watched my video from Pilgrim's Perch and you helped the tortured prisoner, she's actually going to show up over here and we can actually give her the giant's eye that we got from killing that giant from before and she'll give us back the catalyst that's for the inferno now i don't i'm not 100 percent certain on what happens from this point going forward you know this is up to you if you want to choose to do that but she's also a vendor now i came back to this location and she was not there again so if there's anything you need to buy up from her if you're playing an inferno build i would highly suggest just grabbing up Everything that you can right here as quickly as possible. If you got some of those vigor skulls stored away, you know, spend it out, grab those up. Because last time I came back here, she was not here again. So I don't know where she's moved off to or where she's gonna gonna be in the future if she does show up again. So be on the uh, ready for that. Then we'll be heading back down to talk with Raiden to give him the Dark Crusaders call or sell. And then he'll talk about something else, and then later on we'll be able to give him that tome from the Umbral. And then, not sure what going forward actually uh, comes from that, but we'll be heading back to the Upper Cal Wrath location or Vestige. That way we can come back to cleanse this beacon. Now heading around the corner, going back through the courtyard, fighting all those dogs again. We get the Magma Minotaur again. Probably should have sped this up a little bit more, but hey, a little bit more vigor never hurt anybody. Stat right there, though. Goodness. But then there's that hammer taking care of business. And we got another one of those large crafting material uh, shards right there. And over on our right, I can't believe I missed this before when I went to the uh, section just before. We've got an oil flask right here that's going to do fire and physical damage. Nice little flayed skin face on it. Interesting way to uh, uh, utilize a grenade, if you will. And we've got another one of those flame minxes, so be prepared for that moment. There's no boss fight before this uh, beacon, though. I was kind of disappointed in that. I did actually want another boss fight. And we also only got some, like, salts from that, which is ridiculous. But, and nothing really else than that, just cleansing that beacon. But from that point, we'll head back to the vestige point that we came from at the Upper Calrath. Now... There is a door over here, and it says it doesn't budge, which means later on, once we progress the story, eventually that door will open, so we'll be coming back for that at a later point. From this point, we'll be heading back to the Mines Vestige Point, and now we'll be able to open those doors with the Sunless Key. Now, over here, we're going to be 
kind of a fork in the road. We can either go right or we can go left. We're going to go right first as it's going to meet up with a different vestige point and then we'll be able to come back and then hit that left side. But back here we'll have a bit more of that crafting uh, material for our weapon and some something I, I'm supposing from the umbral actually hit me right there without me being an umbral so it's a bit strange. Didn't take damage but I got knocked over. But over on our left, we'll have more of that crafting material. And down below here, we'll actually need to go in the umbral after we defeat this uh, flaming minotaur. We've got another one of those potato heads, or fat boys, if you will. After we pop the stomach over here, we'll grab that up. That's going to be another one of those uh, upgrade items for the health. And then we'll just need to take care of old potato head over here. A little bit of a slow process, but he's not the worst thing to fight. But we'll take that down pretty quickly. Opens up his face. Ooh, a little bit more of that healing rock. And then over here we will have another one of those flame sword guys. Pretty easy to take down. Then over to our right. Walk away for some more crafting material for our weapon. Then heading on down from here. I'm trying to think. If there was anything. Yeah, there'll be something over on our right after we get past this. These darn snakes. And what was this? It's going to be the, the defiled inventory bow. So if you're looking for a new bow, that's one of them. We'll open up this door over here, but we will not go through. Not really certain. This this key was a little bit disappointing to me. Like we get we get a few things out of this, but it, it's more of uh, opening up passageways. We will get another rune for our sockets over here on the corner edge of this. That's going to give us. Um, Strikes increase damage. Strikes. Grievous strikes. I'm not sure. But effectively that could be useful for some of those um, builds out there for you. But over here we're going to have a specific Umbral Rift. This one's actually got something else to it. It's got an odd stone. If you take this back to Pieta over at the Sky Rest Bridge, that's actually a little moment with her when she was at an orphanage. So a little bit of lore background there for you. And if you give her that stone, she'll basically tell you a little bit more about her past in a way. I didn't get anything else out of it, or I can't remember if I did, but if you go back to her, have the conversation with her, don't use that stone, because that stone's actually something you could just you know, use willy-nilly if you wanted to, but I'd save it for that lore moment and just have that conversation with her. You never know, later on it could build to be something else after you gave her that stone, who knows. There is an angler loot down there, so be aware of that. Be careful. Don't get fooled by that one. I've gotten fooled by it too many times before. But over here, we'll also have a little bit of that crafting material for our weapon, and then we'll be heading up to this ladder over here. And you'll notice we're back at the alehouse vestige point. So we'll just be heading back in here, hitting that vestige point, and then heading back to the mines yet again. Now, from this point, we'll be taking the left or the fork in the road as soon as we come down this ladder over here. We'll have to kill these enemies again. Finish them off pretty quickly. That way we're not having anything tail us. And then over here on the left we've got another one of those fire minxes. So be careful. I just decided to use the throwable straight away. Get rid of her as quick as possible so I don't have any uh, frustrating moments going forward. But then heading up this way. We'll be able to head over to the right and... Just tucked over here a little bit more of, uh, oh, it's not crafting material. It's actually another one of those cures. We'll have a flame hound over here. Get rid of that. Up over here, we do want to get rid of this uh, snake archer. Now over to our left, a little bit more of those salts. Sadly enough, I was expecting more secrets out of this area, but we're just going to be getting a bit more of that crafting material. You notice we use the key on this door, but it just opens back up to the same location we were just at, where it connects with the uh, alehouse vestige point. A bit disappointing in my opinion, because, I mean, what was it? The uh, Pilgrim's Perch. I mean, there was at least two doors out of that one that was actually giving us, uh, like, two different loot spots. This one... Feels like it all connects to the same location and just kind of makes a couple of shortcuts, but you know, we get a couple items out of this. Over here, we will get more than a few of the crafting material for our weapons, but beyond that, sadly enough, it, it really wasn't a whole lot over here. This location, I guess, may differ at some later point. We will have another one of those, uh, I mean, General Grievous guys.
Um, you might as well call them that. But we will also get the uh, skin stealer spear over here. Has a bit of fire damage to it. I believe that's actually going to be it. Pretty sure that was the last event. This might be the last piece of loot right here. Guys, that's going to be the uh, Cal Wrath Guide completed right there. We went all the way through it. I've still got to get the guide out for the section below the mines when we were down deep in there for the side quest down there or alternate ending point as well. It's a boss fight down there as well. I'll be getting into that later on today and we'll be working on the uh, is it the Fief, the Frozen Mountaintops. That'll be the next guide coming after that. On top of that, you know, there was that door at the upper portion of Cal Wrath that wasn't available for opening just yet. I'll be putting a guide on that later as soon as I figure out how to get that one open. As I'm fairly certain it's just another one of those moments where you're going to need to... You'll notice right there, goodness, that's that fire minx down below from next to the alehouse that hit us before we even went back into it. Unbelievable. She's got that type of range with her fire damage. But hopefully this has helped you out. You know, hopefully this has gotten all the loot for you, made it uh, as linear as possible for you, and you know, make trying to make it as short as possible. This is, uh, I can't remember how many hours of footage, and we boiled it down to an hour, but thankfully we got it done. But, you know, if you'd like to see more of this content, hit that subscribe button. We got plenty more coming for Lords of the Fallen. If you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that, dis or <laughs> hit that link down in the description below. Follow me over to Twitch. I'm streaming daily. We've got plenty more of Lords of the Fallen coming in the future. And you'll get the uncensored version where I do quite a bit of rage in those moments. If you'd like to see something like that. But on that note, you know, hopefully it's helped you out. I'll see you in the next one. And have a good one.